Good morning and welcome to From the Heart with Pastor Alden. Um, I missed our Wednesday from the heart and so I thought I'd just take a moment and, um, and share with you some things that really have been upon my heart over these last few days. Um, many of you probably have already seen and heard the, uh, the latest variants they put in for in-person services and, and uh, I have received a plethora of uh, texts and emails and comments uh, concerning the, the new variants and, and, and I want to just say I share people's frustration with it, I really do. I, I understand that you know, for us as a church it doesn't really help us. The Bible tells us here in Jude chapter, uh, Jude chapter 1, only one chapter in Jude, but here in verse number 3 it says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful, and I want you to make note of that, okay? Jude is saying it was needful. There was something more important. He had an intention. Jude had a direction. He wanted to write, and he wanted to write about the common salvation. But he said this, it was needful, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I have, uh, because of this new order, I've had a lot of people say, Pastor, it's time for, you know, the church to take a stand and it's time for the church to, to do this. And, and they have all sorts of great ideas uh, for what the church should do and shouldn't do. And, and you know what? Some I'm in agreement with. Some, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not in agreement with. But I want to share three things concerning this as I've thought about the idea of earnestly contending for the faith. First thing I want you to consider, if we're going to earnestly contend earnestly contend for the faith and you want the church to make a stand and, and and we ought to make a public stand let me ask you this number one are you willing to join the church no no I didn't say join the church in a protest I didn't say let's just let's just open up the church let's have in-person services as many as we want um, just to kind of protest the government you know it's interesting to me I get a lot of this let's uh, you know let the church stand uh, from people who don't even want to join the church they don't want baptism. They don't want to, to commit to saying this. And I'm not talking, again, the position at Okanagan Valley Baptist Church is not that uh, this is a universal body. The church is a local, visible, constituted body of believers. I'm talking about Okanagan Valley Baptist Church. You want to stand, would you stand with us and join the church? Would you submit to baptism? Would you, would you see that it is a command? That's the faith, my friends. The faith says you ought to be an active, serving, tithing, giving member of a local New Testament church. So I got to tell you, and, and if I seem a little heated, I'm real tired of, of saying, let's make a stand, let's make a stand, when there's a bunch of people that don't even want to join. You want to earnestly contend for the faith? You want to make a stand? Then maybe it's time that, that, that those who have been delaying the decision to join a local New Testament church, that maybe we ought to do that. How about this? Secondly, we want to earnestly contend for the faith. Um, are we giving to the church? There are great needs here at Okanagan Valley Baptist Church. We want to make a stand, and I want to make a stand too. But I think before we can stand and, 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 and say, you know, to the world, uh, you know, this is what we think. How about getting back to the fundamentals? Let's join the local church. Let's give to the local church. Are we giving tithes and our missions into the special projects? I mean, it has taken hours and hours of work and project planning and new equipment to do what we're doing here. So my question to you, before we make a stand to the world, we need to make sure that we're not being hypocritical in our position. Before we make a stand and say publicly to Dr. Henry or to the province, you know, are we doing what we need to be doing right now? Thirdly, as we join the church and as we give to the church, are we going to attend? We've been hosting drive-in services since, what, end of November, December? We started off strong. We had, you know, 18, 19 cars. I know that that, that easily we could fit 30, 35 cards. Why don't we make a stand by attending what we have? I mean, why come and, and, and kind of have a protest 
in an in-person service when we can't even get folks to come into a drive-in service? Isn't it time to make a stand? Why don't we make a stand within what we can do? We're going to be hosting outside services. I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I really am. I've heard a great report from um, our, our, our tech teams here and our multimedia teams with the pre-registration. But we can have 50 people outside tomorrow. Are you going to be one of them? Or is that not enough of a stand? I mean, think about it. Again, I'm not trying to be controversial. I know this, this from the heart may, may be a little bit longer, but, but I want you to think about it. We could have 50 cars, 50 people, and we're working out what we're allowed inside. Potentially, folks, potentially. We could have every active friend, family, and church family attend without even coming close to breaking the numbers. 50 cars, 50 people, that could potentially be 130 people, plus the, yes, the small amount here. But here's the thing, when I get texts and emails about taking a stand, but I can't get these same folks to attend a drive-in service or an outside service, it makes me wonder, do we really want to make a stand? Do you really want it, is the question I want to ask you. Do you really want it? What greater way, what greater testimony could we be today, right now, tomorrow, to our community to see hundreds, literally hundreds of cars drive by our church and see a full parking lot of cars, 50 people outside, what we can do inside, I don't have those numbers yet. Could you imagine the stir we could make but do you really want to make a stand? Will I see it tomorrow? Will I see the pre-registration explode? I'm just asking, before we make a stand in, in a protest, why don't we make a stand in what we're allowed? But pastor, the governor, I understand the overreach. I, I get it. But I'm here to tell you, and I'm not, and by the way, Pastor Allen is not gonna be content with the, the, with the silliness of, of the government. I'm really not. But as it stands, there are many times we don't have 50 people inside the building and we're allowed 50 outside. No one else but me sees a, maybe a bit of hypocrisy in this. I'm just saying, how bad do you want it? Let me close with this. About a month and a half ago, I received a video from the Philippines, from one of our Filipino churches. They were doing a baptism service in a pool in the middle of an absolute Filipino downpour storm. It's hard to get Canadians to come to a heated building in winter. Look, the order is wrong. They've infringed on our constitutional rights. I write and I'm in contact with our M MP and our provincial health officer on a regular basis. I'm doing everything as a church. We are doing everything as a church to make our voice heard. Let's make our voice heard tomorrow. Let's pack the parking lot. Let's fill up the tents. Let's pack out what we can upstairs and let's make a stand. But will I see you? Or is a mask gonna keep you from attending church. Listen, if a mask keeps you from attending church, you won't hack it in jail, period. You're not gonna sit in a maximum security remand center like Pastor Coates, who by the way, wore a mask on his way out of jail, if you can't wear a mask in a, in a church service. Don't tell me you'll die for Jesus, but you won't put a mask on for Jesus. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm as opposed to mask as anyone. You won't die for Jesus if you won't mask up for Jesus. As much as, I'm, as much as I think they're pointless. But come on guys, let's be real. Let's be real, okay? I love you, you know I love you. You know when I, point, when I speak pointedly, I do it not because I'm upset. But this is a huge opportunity. I don't wanna squander it. We can have our entire community know we're worshiping the Lord. So let's do it tomorrow. 
Stand with me, would you? Would you stand with me? I'm going to be preaching out there at 2 p.m. Brother Gray is going to be teaching at 1 p.m. Am I going to see you? I hope that I do. Know that I love you. I, I, I'm not trying to make people upset. I'm not even trying to be provocative. But do you really want to stand? Then let's do it tomorrow. We have outside services. Yes, we're going to require masks. Yes, we're going to do a health check. We're going to do all of that. But we're going to preach and we're going to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. And truly, from the bottom of my heart, I want the people of Vernon to know that at Okanagan Valley Baptist Church, we will arise and build. Will you join it? Will you give to it? But will you attend it? May the Lord richly bless. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved her.